Hello. Today I want to just <clears throat> talk about the overall franchise of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, this is uh, the obviously complete collection, which has uh, the seven films of Nightmare on Elm Street. I also have the DVD set, uh, which also includes Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, right here, the Shout Factory one is part of the Friday the 13th film uh, set. <clears throat> and um, obviously I've made it very known that Friday the 13th is more of my uh, favorite, you know, my favorite horror franchise. Uh, specifically for slasher films. Um, but I do enjoy Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, obviously, uh, you know, this franchise was created by Wes Craven, <clears throat> the writer and director of the original films. And, uh, doo -doo -doo. uh, he also helped write the third film of the franchise as well as being an executive producer and then he returned to write and direct the seventh film uh Wes Craven's New Nightmare obviously and all seven of these films as well as um in Freddy vs. Jason Robert England is Freddy Krueger and he's just Freddy. He is Freddy, no matter what. <clears throat> he will be the definitive um, Freddy. Played him for eight films, including the TV show. Um, uh, uh, oh. What is that TV show? Oh, Freddy's Nightmare. Uh, there's two episodes on uh, the bonus disc, the DVD. That comes with this, which also, I think they had something similar to that on the complete series, or the eight film franchise on DVD, and I also had the original Nightmare on Elm Street, uh, two discs, DVD, two, um, yeah, I might have mentioned this franchise overall, this was so many years ago, and this film, the original film, is 40 years old, and I f figured, why not talk about this again? So, there's the first one, and then two and three on one disc, four or five on one disc, and then six and seven on the other, and then there is the disc five, which is a DVD. <coughs> All who fear himself, a life and crimes of Freddy Krueger, and other special features like the two episodes of Freddy's Nightmare. And I actually used to watch that uh, show. They had reruns of it on uh, the channel uh, uh, Chiller, uh, uh, Chiller TV or whatever. And um, they also had uh, Tales from the Crypt and. Uh, Tales from the Dark Side and other horror stuff. So, some of that stuff that I probably would have never watched. Otherwise, um, I managed to watch on that network, and it was pretty good. Um, this is a very good set. I, I didn't get the 40th anniversary 4K set, or version set. It was only the original film. Reason being... Um... I have heard that the transfer isn't the best. And um, obviously, Wes Craven passed away back in 2015, so we could not get a, uh, a director-approved one. But still unfortunate that uh, this film doesn't, I guess, have a excellent uh, 4K transfer. The original film, uh, outside of Robert England, includes John Saxon, uh, Ronnie Blakely, Heather 
Langen Camp. <coughs> Langen Camp. Yeah. Ugh. Great, I guess I'm not going to be <laughs> speaking coherently now. And, of course, it was the first film of Johnny Depp. He, uh, yeah, got his whole, he got, he's like, you know, Kevin Bacon and Corey Feldman and Crispin Glover, who, you know, they, before they made it big, they got uh, some of their big, I guess you could call it, in a way, big breaks of sorts, uh, and horror films, obviously. Yeah, of course, also Jamie Lee Curtis. Her first movie was Halloween. And uh, Kevin Bacon had, like, his first uh, pretty big uh, part in uh, Friday the 13th. Wasn't his first film, but that was one where he got a pretty good, substantial uh, role. Which people actually still will watch today. And then, of course, Friday the 13th, the final chapter, the fourth film... Of that franchise um, had both Crispin Glover and Corey Feldman before both of them became uh, widely uh, well known <coughs> to the public at large. So there you go. Um, also, interestingly enough, you know, I like Star Wars obviously, but Robert England actually auditioned to be in Star Wars. Early things I read, he auditioned to be Luke Skywalker. But then I've seen interviews where we say he auditioned to be Han Solo. So I don't know. I mean, he, uh, I, I'm sure he went in to be Han Solo, although, you know, you know, uh, all those years ago. Who knows? Maybe he. they also had him read uh, for uh, uh, Luke also, just to see if. That could help him too. So, like, even if first, like, he didn't get Han, he could get Luke. Obviously, he got neither <laughs> part. But um, but at that point in time, he was actually roommates with Mark Hamill, and he said, you know, hey, why don't you go and audition for this movie? And so Mark Hamill did, and of course, he became Luke Skywalker. There you go. I mentioned Star Wars here, and it actually has some kind of relevance as opposed to. Some other times I reference or mention Star Wars and there's uh, very little. That'd be interesting. It's like, you know, if he was in Star Wars, either as Han Solo or Luke Skywalker, as some of those things I read up on, like, cause again, it's on the internet, so. <clears throat> uh, surprisingly, not everything is true on the internet. I know it's a shock. But regardless, um, yeah, it makes me wonder uh, whether he would have been Freddy Krueger or not, you know, if he was in either part, you know. I guess you could say he might have gotten probably, like, uh, typecast uh, 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 being in those kind of films, but who knows, maybe he would have been able to be like Harrison Ford and branch out more. Or who knows. Um, but, you know, uh, he's an excellent uh, Freddy Krueger, obviously. He's the best Freddy Krueger. Um, and I, of course, I've mentioned, um, or I've talked about Freddy versus Jason, so I don't really have a whole lot else to say about that. Entertaining film, you know. It, it, and, you know, as franchises go on, some of the sequels aren't all that great, but, you know, in a way, it's sort of like Friday the 13th. Even the ones that are going to be, like, kind of like, meh, you put near the bottom. At the end of the day, there's still, there's enough in there that that's fairly entertaining enough to be like, eh, not my favorite, but I don't, I don't feel like a, uh, I'm going to just up in the, uh, skip uh, that installment if I, you know, have a marathon of the films. So, that's something, at least, <clears throat> um, I think. And then there is the remake, which I saw this in the theaters, uh, 14 years ago. Yeah, that's something. 
uh, one day I might talk about all of these films. I mean, I already talked about this. So I probably won't talk about this again because I'm pretty sure my thoughts will pretty much be the same. And there's no point in basically making another video on the movie or me talking about the movie. And then all, as and it's just me repeating the exact same thing or at least vaguely similar. And it's like there's no point, I don't think. Um, but yeah, Jackie Earl Haley replaced um, Robert England, And Haley was actually excellent, but of course, Robert England will always be Freddy. And um, one thing that's interesting of note, you know, I saw this again in the theater when this film came out. Um, and, um, like, uh, Friday the 13th, the reboot, a uh, year prior, in this remake, yeah, it's, it's something. The acting itself is fine overall, no real complaints there, but, you know, maybe like next year or so, I'll talk about all these movies individually, and I'll get into my thoughts and why I'm not super fond of this uh, film and many others aren't either so it's not a big shock but um Rudy Mara Mara yeah she she's in this she does a very good job as Nancy though not the exact same Nancy that is in this film but yeah and and she did not have an excellent or a great experience with this film yeah, she said her, she actually kind of was uh, thinking about quitting acting because of how much of a unpleasant experience she had making this. So that's unfortunate. And uh, yeah, I know Wes Craven was not a big fan of this. Um, Robert England tried to do his best to be as supportive as possible. And um thought that uh Jack Earl Haley did a fine job and I agree um but yeah Rudy Mara got to be the girl with a dragon tattoo the year after this film came out so you know good for her and she got an Academy Award nomination so you know well deserved and you know glad she kept acting because uh, I don't know I, I, I liked her in that part but and in the film. But yeah. Um, very entertaining franchise. Again, slasher film. So not everybody's going to enjoy. These kind of movies. Um, and that's completely fine. I, I, I no issue if you're not fond of horror films like this. Um, but I will say it's uh, fairly entertaining in my opinion. Uh, entertaining films and um yeah i enjoy rewatching these every so often and for the franchise's uh 40th anniversary i thought you know i might as well just kind of give a general overview of the franchise and uh yeah hopefully i will uh talk about all these films at one point um not sure when that will be offhand, you know. I don't necessarily want to outright plan everything. I mean, I want to have some ideas of what I would like to talk about down the line. But it's also kind of nice to just be like, you know, just saw this movie. Either for the first time or first time in a long time and want to give my thoughts about it. So I want to keep that going. So, yeah. Nightmare on Elm Street. Definitely one of the most uh, iconic horror franchises with one of the most iconic horror uh, villains. You know, and he, you know, he talks, you know. You know, you've got Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, Leatherface. Those three are pretty much, they don't really talk. I mean, Leatherface, he kind of sort of speaks, but it's all gibberish. And only like his family knows what he's talking about. So, you know, it's like he's... 
uh, you know, almost be like, yeah, might as well be silent, I guess. <laughs> Um, but, you know, Freddy talks. So, there is that. And other villains do talk, too. But, you know, Freddy, you know, he has a sense of humor about him. So, and that actually appeals to people. And that's no doubt in part why people wanted, uh, in this film, Freddy vs. Jason, wanted Freddy to be the victor. Of course, there are people who want Jason to be the victor also, but, yeah. Never got a sequel, but perhaps that's a good thing. I know they were planning a lot of stuff uh, of what could be, what could happen, like Freddy versus Jason versus Michael, Freddy versus Jason versus Ash, and um, Freddy versus Jason versus Pinhead, and all the these kind of uh, other horror icons of course ash is a good guy or you know pinhead and michael are villains but yeah i uh want to just talk about uh this franchise just in general don't know how excellent this is but who knows uh maybe this will get me to actually discuss each and every movie individually in the future maybe near future who knows but yeah i hope all of you are doing well um this time of year i hope you're all enjoying different kind of films you know i guess particularly of the horror variety because it's october but if you're not into horror movies hope if you're watching any kind of movies hopefully they're all good and even if you're watching something for the first time, hopefully it's a good experience and not an experience that you're just like, yeah, I wish that didn't happen. Because those are never fun. But anyway, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope you all have a, a great day. Hope you'll have a great weekend and a great week. And I'll see you all next time. So please uh, take care. <laughs>